Are you excited? Thanks for joining in. I'm Onimisi Adaba, and okay, how have you been? You know, I ask that all the time because I really care. Honestly, how have you been? Okay, good. Not good. Why? If you want to talk about it, you can do that on Twitter. Twitter? You want to do that on Twitter? Well, it's up to you. If you really want to talk about it, let's um, just send me something on Facebook and let's see what we can do. But if you're okay, if you're fine, nice and sweet, ring a ding a ding, ring in the bell for you, nice and sweet. Now, today, I've got me a, a how do you say it now? A double, double, double impact, if I may say. You've watched the movie, right? Double impact. Well, I've got that coming your way today. And, you know, like, you know, in recent times, we've been talking to a couple of big names to share their lives, their stories, their challenges, difficulties, and how they made it, how they made it. And it was deliberately done for you to listen. No calls, just listen to their story. And that's what we're going to do again today with these guys that I have in the house. They've got this amazing story. I had a chat with them um, behind the scenes before coming up to the studio, and boy, you're in for a treat, I'm telling you. Um, how did I find them? I was talking with one of my colleagues at NEK. I'm like, hey, look, I need, I need a guest too. And she mentioned these guys, talked about their story, and I'm like, you know what? This is right on point. Now, um, okay, <laughs> before I let you in on who they are, I'll go on a quick break. And when we come back, right here in the men's room, I'll let you in on who I have. Honestly, don't go anywhere. If you have people moving around, call them back in because you really want to check out what we have for you tonight in the men's room. I'm Orimisi Adaba. We'll catch you shortly. Stay with us. Back, the men's room. Okay, one more second for them to come, right? Come on, pump up the volume for them to hear in the other room. There we go, there we go. All right, so you're, you're cruising home right now. All right, it's all good. We'll keep you there in traffic. That's fine. So, the men's room is what it is. Welcome back. And like I did say, double impact. That's what I have tonight. Um, it's double impact because I have a couple. A man and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Oshikoya. Benga, um, a legal person, a lawyer. And Umitola, who took her time out to write a book. And you know what that means. When you write a book, like pouring your thoughts, pouring everything in one document um, for people to read, to get by, to find some, some comfort, some strength, and um, some inspiration. And we're going to talk about her book today as it relates to her, her husband, the family, and possibly society. Yep, that's what we're going to be doing in the men's room today. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to have you in. Thank you very much. It's a first, pleasure to be here. First time in the men's room. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's actually um, the second time I'm having a couple in the men's room. And um, thanks for coming. Now, um, hmm. honestly, it's, 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 it's so well-rounded, I don't know how to start. But um, let's try it this way. The Richer Woman, A Woman's Guide to True Wealth. Why did you write this book? Straight up to you. Um, Omitola. Omi Lola. I called you Omitola earlier on. Yes. Omi, my goodness. <laughs> Omi Lola. <laughs> yeah. So why did you write this book? Um, hmm. That's a, one question actually that I had to answer. Um, I think it was an instruction. Mm. So I am known as a data freak queen. I'm known as a personal finance coach, Africa's premier wealth coach. So if I were to write a book, I'll probably write a book on do it afraid or, or finance. Yeah. But um, I mean, is what happened. I had started writing the book when I got instructions from God to write a book. I started writing a book on um, <clears throat> do it afraid, and then as I was writing, God began to tell me to share intimate details about my life, including my marriage, and I was a bit afraid because. <laughs> Um, it's it's one thing to just write a book about principles, but it's another thing to bear yourself out and talk about things that people do not necessarily talk about in our culture, not just in Nigeria. Usually, hush hush, don't under the carpet. Exactly. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Exactly. Just move on like and it didn't particularly, happen. one of the things we we, talk, we talked about in the book is something that not even is not even a culture barrier. Even in the world, nobody has really come out as a woman to talk about it, which is adultery. And I, so I left the book. I literally left it, you know, 
and then one day I read I was invited to speak at Google to women in tech on finance on managing their finances and I did that and I spoke and then I, w I had just released a, a journal my do it a great journal mm -hmm. and so I was signing copies <clears throat> and a lady walked up to me and said there's a book you're writing God says you should speed it up that book you didn't know this lady I did from not her. know her from anywhere she wasn't even a follower on social media because she didn't even know me as well even though I, I'm quite book, um, um, visual on social media and she said this book needs to be birthed quickly. I see quarter one, 2017. This book is going to save a lot of marriages. A lot of young women are suffering in silence with no real teachers. At that point, I freaked out because I said, how? I literally got up my seat. I was like, how did you know I was <laughs> writing a book? This is not church. This is not a an inspirational concert. This is a tech event talking about finance how did you do it then? talk about the lord walking in mysterious ways Amen. and so my journal moment ended and i knew that i had to write this book and i and i took out time I, I wrote this book in a month in a month in a month wow because i i took out literally i thank god for my husband he he helped me focus on the kids when so that i could i mean sometimes i'll write from 1 a.m wouldn't finish till like 11 a.m in the morning just writing and also when i was writing this book we face some of the greatest challenges because all of a sudden my art so my, like our children were under attack the enemy just kept attacking we had to, in in the process i had to take my daughter to london for surgery and that was just immediately after so i, I released i actually launched the book in london and so a series of things but I, I knew that these things were happening because of the huge impact this book was going to and so far it's been phenomenal we've had um requests from as far as um, Australia, Australia, Canada, Canada. Oh, yeah, yes, the book. Every, like Dubai, like Kenya, Ghana, <clears throat> the, the U.S., Ireland, all over the world. People are, I mean, and people. This is a 250-page book, which mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. over 56,000 words, and people are reading it. Someone told me she read it in an hour. Wow. People are reading it <laughs> in, like speed reading. in a night. People are, um, <laughs> men that don't read are reading it. I mean, a, a lady sent me a message that her husband does not read. And one night she woke up and she saw him reading the book and he finished it that night. Wow. I mean, people are reading. People are breaking out crying. I'm getting already receiving testimonies about how marriages are, are being, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. impacted. So. so this book must have been as a result of your experience yes. in marriage. Share I, with us. I think it wasn't just a marriage because you know we're all children in adults bodies you can say that again you know and <laughs> whatever you see an adult do is starts off from childhood so mm -hmm. for me also some of the things I experienced okay um, I came from a very very wealthy home um, my grandfather was his company was daily manufacturer of cement sacks in Nigeria mm -hmm. at the time and so you can imagine for every house all the cement companies literally were using his company mm. so for every house that was built cement was yeah. bagged by you know mm. so you can imagine the kind of this was just one of his portfolios but when he passed away we went through serious financial challenges and so I'm talking about flying private jets as a young, a young girl, very young age mm. to at one point we were homeless Wow. yes um, to, I mean, so many different challenges. You were homeless. Yes. With building cement, you were homeless. Yes. So it, it was a. I mean, we had uh, obviously my grandfather luckily made good investments, so we had a house. But then we had this huge house, and we didn't have cash, so it made financial sense for my dad to rent our house yeah. and rent a smaller property, mm -hmm. which we did. And but then the landlord of the house we rented now wanted to sell his house. And we didn't have money to sell, to buy it, and at the same time we couldn't move back to our other yeah, house because so it'd been rented. So we literally didn't have a place to stay. So I had to go and stay with my one of my aunts. My parents had to move to out of town. And I think for me, what really broke me was the fact that it was actually a family member that bought the house that we were living in. So those so, some of those challenges. I mean, there was my mom had a brain tumor. At that point, we couldn't. Um, we had to deposit thirty thousand pounds. Um, for the surgery. surgery and so thankfully family came to help you know so some of those How challenges sort of pushed me to saying you know what I'm going to be very rich and very successful at, at all at all 
you know, cuss. Not all cuss. Thankfully, my parents um, had put in character in me, so I knew it all <laughs> legitimate, you know. So yeah. I knew I wanted to go into investment banking and I was going to be very, very successful. So that aside also, I came from a home of domestic violence, um, serious domestic violence. Um, and so I, w I grew up very insecure because I, I wasn't sure if one of my parents would, would leave. Even with the wealth around? Even, you know, so that was even the time when we were going through the financial challenges, you know, and so thinking, I wasn't sure who was going to leave. So as a child, if your parents are not, if, you're, if there's no security for you at home, yeah. it affects, it affects you, you, on the outside. you know, on the outside because then I didn't feel that I was loved. Uh, at the same time, I was also sexually abused by a house help, you know, and so I literally was looking for love and affirmation, and that also led me into the wrong relationships in my younger years but thankfully um, I came to a point where I began to discover that I needed to love myself and this was where I found you know a, a deeper relationship with Jesus prior to that I was just religious and I, I read this book The Lady Her Lover and Her Lord by T.D. James and he basically you know I, I, I understood the concept about loving yourself and that you are who you attract yeah. I understood that just because you're um, alone doesn't mean you're lonely. I, I then began to understand that I was loved by God. Yes, my father did love me, but I guess as he was young, you know, how many people know that you actually have to, it's important to affirm that you love your child, you know, especially with the girls, you know, so I began to understand that I was loved by God. And then thankfully at that time was when I met my husband, when I had become to understand who I also needed to be with, the kind of man that God wanted me to be with, and then I met my husband. But then I still came with baggage. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, you have been on the roll. Talk about women talking. <laughs> <laughs> now let's hear from the man. So, um, how did you handle the baggage? Mm -hmm. um, you know, before that, just, just let's hear about you briefly and um, how you um, were able to deal with a whole lot of things okay um, for me you know I, I grew up in a Christian home like mm -hmm. most people um, my parents have been married for going up to 60 years now Wow um, I'm the last of six children four girls and two boys were you spoiled be honest. Um, be honest. Go well, on. that's one of the issues. Mama's boy. Yeah, no, that's one of the issues <laughs> we had to deal with at really? marriage because she felt maybe um, I was spoiled. Hmm. But obviously, I, I would say I was spoiled to the extent of normal um, pleasures and um, allowances, so to say. Hmm. But my parents were also strict. Hmm. My mother's the kind of mother that um, she would give you stuff if you deserve it. Mm -hmm. And she would always let you know that, you know, don't step out of your place. Yeah. My dad is more liberal, mm. you know, um, because he was so busy, he wasn't, not that he wasn't around most of the time, but, you know, he's, he's soft, he's softer than yeah. my mom. Yeah. Anyway, going back to, you know, why we're here, um, it's about The Richer Woman, a book my wife wrote. Um, from day one, I always thought, like she said, it was going to be a book on finance, because I knew where she was coming from yeah. and what she was going through. Um, but, like she said, with, after the Google incident, it dawned on me that this book is really, be, yeah. it's really important. And I'll say why, and I'll go back to the very beginning. And when I say the very beginning, um, I'm talking about um, the book of Matthew, chapter 19. Yeah. If you read verse 1 to 12, particularly verse 4 to 8, it talks about how it's, he, um, Christ was talking to the Pharisees, and he told them, um, have you not read that in the beginning he created them male and female? That for that reason a man will leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife. Now it dawned on me that, you know, God is intentional in the sense that family is key. Um, if you go back into the beginning at Genesis, after he created Adam and everything, he found out that he needed, Adam needed companionship. And that's where the concept of family started. You know, not marriage per se, but, you know, family union. Um, and to this extent, I now realize that, because if you read that uh, Matthew chapter 19, for every um, man and woman, God has created a partner or partnership or relationship. 
But again, we read towards the end, it says it is for those who can receive it, let them receive it. You know, it talks about the only thing that is supposed to break, break up the marriage is adultery. But I don't think um, it means it in that sense, in my own opinion. I think it talks about, you know, um, being able to forgive and, you know, being able to, re you know, redeem your love. Anyway, let me go back to what you asked me about, you know, what is my position here? I met Omilola um, when I was in law school. Um, I'd come back from England. My main aim was, number one, get this law school out of the way, get your license. <laughs> then number two, I was looking for someone to get married to. Yeah. So at the same time, I was praying because of my Christian background. And um, the first time I met her, you know, I was like, you know, she looked interesting and everything. But I wasn't very upfront. I didn't get her numbers because I was trying to study her to understand because yeah. I've had experiences yeah. with, you know, different girls and, you know, not different girls as in many, but but relationship, you had your pick. As in relationships. Mm -hmm. I've had long term relationships before <laughs> yeah. I met her. Yeah. So and because I was looking for a wife I needed to. So anyway, when I met her, uh, found out her, her name, Omilola Olua. And it dawned on me, I've never heard that name before, mm -hmm. Omilola Olua, which, which means um, water is God's wealth. Okay. And later on I now something touched me and I realized because I'd had this experience as a child. I think about age nine or ten, I had this dream, and Christ appeared to me in my dream. Um, he was seated on a ch uh, on a couch, mm -hmm. a one-seated couch, and my parents were in that dream. And um, I went to my parents and said, "He's here," and they were like, "Who? Who is here?" And like most homes during that time, you have the picture of the Last Supper, or something. and I yeah. pointed to yeah. the man in the center of the picture. I said mm. him, and they were like, "Oh, go and ask him what he wants." This was all in the dream. And all I remember doing was like how you're trained at home to serve guests. Yeah, I served them, yeah. I believe, a cup of water or a glass of water. And I woke up. You know, for many years I discussed it with my parents, but you know, my parents, this was in maybe the 80s. Mm -hmm. they, they heard me, but they probably thought, mm -hmm. you know, a kid. Well, but as years went by and I kept thinking about it, it stayed with me even till today. You know, it keeps staying with me. I thought, why did I have this dream? But when I now met my wife, Umilola Olua, I now thought, wait a minute. In that dream, I gave him water. Mm -hmm. I've been praying for a wife, and he's giving me a wife, and her name is Umilola Olua. Yeah. As in, is he repaying me for what I did? Mm -hmm. That was what came into my head. Then I thought, okay, fair enough. You know, God works in mysterious ways. You know, God is intentional. He has intentions about what he does. Hence why I talked about Matthew chapter 19. Yeah. Now, um, when this book, came out, um, there was a day I was thinking, and it dawned on me, another um, scenario in my life dawned on me, because there was a time my mom had told me how I got my name, and um, the name I was supposed to be given. Is that Benga? Benga, yes, okay. that's the name I was given. Mm -hmm. But I was supposed to be given another name, because mm. just after I was, before I was born, my dad was um, working, I think, at British petroleum, so it was up and down Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So at some point he had a, a nervous breakdown because of traveling yes. by road and stuff. So just after he came out of that, I was born. So my parents, obviously as parents, they were praying and everything. So I guess they felt they needed to name me Uluwa Shegun, as in God has granted me. Mm -hmm. But before the priest, at the time, he had asked them, you know, what are the names you want to give him, they read it out. And he said no. That, you know. The priest these, said no. The priest said no, that these are not his names. That his name shall be, it was in Yoruba. He says his name shall be Joan. Mm. The one, John. John yes. The one before Christ. Mm. Um, Uluwa Bimika. That those are the only two names. And, you know, when my mom told me that story years ago, you know, I thought, oh, wow, well, I was named by a priest or whatever. <laughs> and my parents acceded to it. It was now, you know, when she was very nervous to release this book, and when, you know, the bit of um, backlashes that, you know, why would you allow your wife to do this, or, you know, why are you doing this? And I realized that she's my wife. I've got to be behind her. I have to back her 110%. Now, I said to her, her name is Umilola Olua. She's a gift from God to me. Now, John the Baptist, before Christ, preached about 
you know, the coming of Christ. And John the Baptist was baptizing people with water. It now dawned on me that putting two and two together. You know, I had this dream, and even before I had the dream, I was named, now I believe, for a particular purpose, yes. which is to back her. You know, as John the Baptist, and she's water, literally, so to say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, we're supposed, yeah. we're supposed to be together wow. in whatever it is this book is about. Mm. So for me, I think it, it was important for me to share this with people because yeah. we have to remember, especially if we're Christians and believers, and not Christians in the sense of religion, because religion is everywhere, yeah. but Christians in the sense of a relationship with God, mm -hmm. you know, a relationship even with spouses, because it's God that created this union. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, that's why I'm behind this book, 100%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I pray that, you know, a lot of people get to read it, both male and female. Yeah. Because we went through a lot of trials. Mm -hmm. It's not everything. This book is just a synopsis of, you know, what we went through. But, you know, it's, it's about the redeeming power okay. that God avails to all of us. Now, we've talked about them, and we really haven't gotten into the meat of the matter of the book. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, the concluding part of the show, we'll go into bits and pieces of the book and take as much as we can. This is the men's room, Onimisi Adaba here, alongside, I need to get the name right now, Omilola and Benga Oshikoya. We're talking on the ritual woman, stay with us. Onimisi Adaba in the house, the men's room is what it is. We're talking richer woman, the author is here, Omilola Oshikoya. She's here with her husband, Benga. And uh, we heard a lot from them, um, back and forth, you know, the background. Now we're getting into the meat of the matter, the book, you know, the book itself that um, so far is doing good in the markets all the way in Australia, you said, right? Australia yeah. people are asking and all of that. The richer woman. Now, in the book, you talked about um, your career versus your marriage. Tell us a bit about that. Okay, so, you know, I had said that um, I'd gone through financial challenges growing up, so... I grew up saying, you know what, I was going to be very successful and I chose a job in accounting and then moved on to investment banking because I believed it could, you know, it was the fastest way to become very, very um, rich. Um, and, but, you know, in investment banking, one, I was in a team where I was the only woman and then obviously you're also trying to show that, you know, you're, you're capable you know, mm. um, so you're not looked down upon. Exactly. Yeah. Prove a point. Exactly. Yeah. But even though for the men, they would go home and have their wives cater to them, I was a woman and I had to go home and cater to my, mm. you know, so, but well, then I, I was working long, late, I yeah. work late. Double shift, actually. You know, wake up in the, wake up really early in the morning when it's still dark, go to work, come, come back home when it's dark. And so I wasn't. You know, the initial euphoria of, yes, I liked my job, you know, kind of left because then I wasn't spending that much time with my children, with my husband, and then I felt like, you know what, I, could, I can't do this. This is not the life I wanted. I didn't actually... Here's the deal. Here's the deal. A few years passed, the excitement of the new job fizzled out. I would leave the house 5 or 6 in the morning to get to work before 7.30, and I would get home average about... 8 p.m. That's sometimes early. later. Yeah. yeah, most times later, most times later, but that's an average. And so I began to, I knew this wasn't life, this wasn't the life that I wanted to live. I didn't, at that point, I wasn't even enjoying the work anymore. Um, uh, my marriage was being affected because I then began to feel like I wanted to leave the job, but I felt like I couldn't. I felt like my husband didn't understand mm. why I wanted to leave. I felt trapped because at that point, um, at that point, I think I was earning more, yeah. mm -hmm. and mm. I was, so I felt like, you know, and obviously because of, I felt we wouldn't be able to cope because of my, the kind of lifestyle I wanted, not necessarily because we couldn't, but I had this high hopes, this, you know, aspirations, these things that I wanted that I felt like... What did you want? What kind of lifestyle did you want? I, you know, I think... I think jet it's, no, no, no. <laughs> I think it wasn't even about like the typical things that women do back and all of that. I think for me it was just security. So I wanted to be able to travel, you know, I all will. the time. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted, yes, nice things, you know. The nice things of life. Which is Nice that? things of life, you know. So I kind of, so I felt like if that was the way to it, um, and if 
if I had to leave my job, then we would have to, you know, suffer. suffer. Mm. And so I kind of felt trapped. I began to resent my husband. I began to I began to say things a woman shouldn't say to a man. Mm. And at the same time, I guess he too was going through his own thing. And so we kind of lived in the same house, but we're sort of living apart. How how did you? How was that phase for you? Um, for me, I think. Like in marriage, the first five years are tough, even the first two years. I knew her aspirations, I knew where she came from. Because like I said, you know, I'd studied her before mm. I proposed. Um, you know, I knew a lot of what she says in the book mm. that happened, because we talked a lot. Mm. And um, because, okay, I came from a family that, you know, there wasn't domestic violence, so to say, but there's, a, there's the normal you know, arguments, yes. mother-father arguments mm. and stuff. Um, you know, there's a part then, you know, I had, I was independent to an extent because I went to boarding school, mm. you know, from the age uh, about 12, 13, I went to boarding school and I could take care of myself, you know, I could wash my clothes and everything. Um, there's a part in the book she talks about, you know, she didn't know how to love herself. Mm. She didn't know how to take herself out. And the ironic thing, because when I read it, I laughed. Because I don't think it was, I was the kind of person I could go to cinema alone, yeah. and go to rest, and I'll be very happy. You'll be a sober treat. Yes, yeah. I'll be so happy, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm alone. Um, so um, I think, you know, I I understood what she was going through, mm. but again, I'm a lot older than her. And so I, you took it in good stride. Y well, yes, mm. to an extent. Mm. But at the same time, I was trying to encourage her to understand that look, you know, things might not always be the way they are now. Yeah. They could change. You know, sometimes I, I could flip. Sometimes I try to be logical and flip the book. That look, what if I was a multimillionaire, I married you, we had everything, and one day we lost everything, like what she, yeah. you know, had to deal with as a child. You know, these things could happen. So, and you know, um, not to say I didn't want those things to. Obviously, I love to travel. You know, my parents, you know, sacrificed a lot to send me abroad. You know, mm. Send my mm. brothers and sisters abroad. You know. Um, Ever since I was born, my dad never bought a brand new car. Mm. You know, those are the sacrifices he made. But, you know, there was provision and everything. Okay. How did it play out on the kids? Um, I, my, at You've the got time, three lovely kids. Yes. Mm. So, luckily, my daughter... I like your combination. <laughs> I like mine. So Two girl. girls, one boy. <laughs> yeah, I got the girls first and the boy last. Yeah. Yeah, Is that yours? Yeah. 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 I always wanted a girl first, though. I always wanted always two girls. girls. <laughs> always a girl first. Anyway. Okay. I think my well, <laughs> thankfully I, I I have this mindset that the first ten years of a child's life are very crucial, especially once they reach five because they're more aware and then they need you more. So yes. at the back of my mind I kept thinking that was like I kept thinking, My daughter, I must leave this job by the time my daughter is five. She can't be more than five yes. before I, I leave the job. So, so thankfully I did resign when she was just about to turn six so she was five mm -hmm. so i'm um, i mean it's so funny though maybe we should actually have this discussion with her because sometimes mm -hmm. i just have conversation I'm like she's like oh mommy you're going out again and i'm like but do you remember do you want me to go back to the job that i was in mm -hmm. before she's like no 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 that i prefer i prefer this that before she didn't used to see me a lot my younger mm -hmm. daughter was about two when i left so she was still yeah. quite young mm -hmm. but my older daughter she remembers she she does remember that i was away a lot um, I think she does also remember that we used to argue a lot, and so she's like, so we actually had this discussion mm -hmm. the other day. I'm like, so do Daddy and I argue again? She's like, mm, but now it's more like mm, just play, but before it was like a serious. <laughs> Amazing kind of. how smart they are. Yeah. yeah. So observant and so smart. Mm -hmm. All right. Test and trials. So basically, so after all of that, and I and like I said, began to resent, and I felt like there was no way out. I began to, I found, I felt like the only solution was God. And so I began to pray and I began to fast for my husband once a week. And at that point was when we faced the greatest test and trials because in fact the day that I was fasting on my way back from South Africa from a tr work trip, I met someone on the plane. Mm. And that then became, it was a series of temptations for for about okay. three years, yeah. yes, for about three years, and it was, I mean, like, when they, like, this was, I mean, literally, that day I was fasting, I literally broke my fast on the plane, mm. and I was praying for my husband, so it's like, you know, when you, I mean, it was really, it seemed more than natural, because this is someone that 
I never saw in my life. All of a sudden, I'm seeing him everywhere I go on the road, you know, just um, same birthday as my husband. It was just something like, okay, it was like, I felt like it was sort of a distraction, but I tried to fight it for, for three years. In that process, I resigned from my job, you know, waiting, you know, normally you wouldn't resign until you have a plan B, exactly. but you know, I had prayed and God had told me, taking me to Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, where he told Abraham to leave the land that he was in to the land he was yeah. going to show him. And God literally said, take the first step and I will show you. Mm -hmm. And I resigned. And I resigned at the point where my career was now about to take off to the next level. Mm -hmm. So literally, my boss had been fired and I was supposed to take up his position. And so this wow. was... Talk about so I felt like I was... <laughs> I felt like I had to choose between my career and money and my life and my family. Thankfully, I chose that. But I still went through a period of depression because the first couple of months, there was nothing. I was waiting. I, I had a job offer. God said I shouldn't take it. I was broke. I was depressed. I felt like what I had, what had I done? And then I went on a trip with my friend. She said, "Oh, it's a, it was a cut sister's wedding that I should go on a trip with her. You know, she'll, she'll pay for me and everything." And I was like, "Okay, nice. Anyway, I need this. I don't mind this. You know, outlet just to yeah, go away." Either. And then the same person that I had been fighting temptation happens to be in the same hotel with me. Good Lord. And, I, you know, the mistake I made was at that point, because I had already thankfully told my husband a year before about the temptations and stuff. Yeah. At that point, I should have sent my husband, called him and told him, that, ah, see you, I came here and this is what I found out. But I, at the same time, I was afraid and I thought since I had fought it for so long, I could fight it. And I didn't want to worry my husband. I didn't want him to think that, oh, it was planned. And so I thought I could, but then mm -hmm. I ended up falling. And but then when I thought, so at that point I thought it was the end of my life. Mm. I thought, you know what? I came back to Nigeria. and I thought I'd lost my job. I was about to lose my marriage. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I, you know, I was, you know. But then it was actually the beginning of my life. Mm. It's in that place that I be, I found purpose. It's in that place that I became Africa's premier wealth coach. It was in falling that all of these things. Well, it, yes, exactly. exactly. So it, it basically, so I went to meet my pastor to tell him that, you know, this is what had happened and I needed to you know, tell my husband. And my pastor, we spoke and he said he didn't think it was time to tell him and that anyway, since I had free time and I wasn't doing anything, I should come and volunteer in church. Mm -hmm. And now today I'm a co-host on a talk show that airs in 44 African countries. Um, I became Africa's premier world good doors started opening, I've spoken, I've won awards, I've mm. spoken in, I've hosted massive conferences. My last two separate conference was at Echo Hotel. Um, I have... Sorry, the show is called Heart of the Matter. The of I this. was going to ask what show is that? Yes, the Heart of the Matter. Right. Um, There's I, a saying that goes, the Heart of the Matter is... Oh gosh, how is it now? Yeah. What the matters of the heart or something? <laughs> anyway, figure that out. Anyway, go on. Yes, and I mean, I have been. I mean, my first um, speaking engagement was amongst. I was the only individual amongst the top investment banking firms in Nigeria with billions of dollars under asset management, mm. twenty years track record, and I was the only person. In fact, my the company I was working in was also invited. You know, and I have spoken at multinationals, banks, or companies, you know, um, so much has happened. But this happened shortly after the fall. Yes. And you told your husband about this, or it was still under wraps? So I had, I had, gosh, I'm literally seeing the whole book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had, I had told my pastor, you know, and I, that I, I, this is what happened, and I wanted to tell my husband, and my pastor said, um, he didn't think it was time. He said, mm -hmm. there will be a time, mm -hmm. you know, um, he also said, too, then I started working in the church. So later on, I kind of felt a prompting again to tell my husband. And I, and I, I was really scared. Um, I really cried. I was really scared. And I really felt strongly that God wanted me to. And coincidentally, that same day that God told me was when my hu husband started work, walking a deeper walk with God. Mm. He started a discipleship course. And amazingly, so all the all the literally we felt like all my prayers because yes like you said he, he he gave his life to christ at a young age but once he went to england you know he sort of deterred a bit so it was like life 
God took the yes, away. but was like then God brought him back. So I began to watch. There's this course we do, the Experiencing God um, Discipleship course, and it says God shows you where He's at work, and it's an invitation to join Him. So I began to watch. I knew that okay, maybe God was saying I should tell him, but it wasn't on that day. And I began to watch. And I told my my pastor again. I was like, hmm, I don't know. I don't think it's time. But I remember going for a prayer meeting, and someone said, "There's somebody here. God has told you to do something." And even the church has said you shouldn't. You must do it. There's destiny in this thing. The church said you shouldn't. The, but the Lord said you should. Exactly. So obviously my pastor said I, I should, but he didn't think it was time. Time, yes. He didn't think yeah. it, my Timing. husband was ready because mm -hmm. he had also counseled us in the past. So yes. he he knew the challenges we went through. He wasn't sure, but obviously God had already been working in my husband. And then I told him. You take it from yeah, me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, like she said, obviously she's been struggling with the temptation and the, you know, the trials of life and marriage like most people do for three years. Um, I, she told me initially, um, we kind of worked through it. Obviously I was... Um, How did it hit you? I mean, wife comes and says, hey, look, remember that trip? <laughs> it was a trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it hit me. I, I wouldn't lie. I, you know, mm. even for even the humanness. Yeah, you know. Um, but because it was the second time around that she now opened up. Because mm -hmm. the first time she kind of gave me an idea. Of, yes. you, know, you know, it just sounded as if it was a casual, like anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of people like um, it, it sounded like flirting the first time around. Yeah. But the second time around, it was more detailed and you know she broke down everything and I was like wow you know it it hurt I wouldn't lie mm -hmm. because obviously as a man you know I flirt a lot kind of thing mm -hmm. and stuff but obviously you know but with what she said it it hurt but like she said I think it was just God's grace because just before was it before you told me or after that I had my late incident yes no okay no, was it was weird. she told me you know, about what happened then. After that, things started happening in our marriage and to me, even just before I turned 40. Good things or? No, bad things. Okay. More like mm. attacks, but people say it's just, people say coincidence. Mm. Well, you know it says in the Bible, we do not re wrestle against flesh and blood, mm. but against mm. um, principalities. And that's what a lot of us don't understand. Because the devil is at work very hard. He knows time more than anybody. He's crafty. He's why. Yeah, because you know. he knows he's running out of time. Yeah. He knows he's destined to go. So, you know, after she told me, you know, it, it affected me a lot to the point that, you know, sometimes we're driving or we're going, you know, I'll get angry. I'll remember, you know. That, you know, that was she, the first time before I actually yeah. went on the trip. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, 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 it affected me. You know, it affected some of my judgments, you know, the way I reacted to the kids. Sometimes the way I react mm -hmm. to her, you mm -hmm. know. I'll get angry, you know. And for some time I even thought about maybe I should go out mm. and, you know, have my own. But from, you know, from back when I was young, before I met her, you could ask a lot of my friends. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I found it very hard to, you know, play as a player. Yeah. You know, it, it's not that I didn't want to, but mm. I'll get, there's so many scenarios I've got to <coughs> getting there and something just didn't. Holds you back. Yeah. yeah, so I, and that's when I realized, you know, God is at work in this, and that's why, you know, marrying her and what we're going through, it's all an experience for where how, we are now and sharing this story with people. How did you get past anger um, to forgiving and to being where you are now? How I think did you, and because I, I want you to paint that picture because a whole lot of us are going through this. I mean, someone is listening right now and is going through this and would want to like, look, this guy said this and I want to apply that. Vice versa. I think um, for me it was grace. It was God's grace. Mm. You know, I wouldn't lie. You know, sometimes I won't talk to her for days. I'll be angry because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a man. I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. But at that same time, expressing those things because there's another part in the bible that talks about it is when you're down when things are really hard that's when god shows up and that's where he wants to be glorified 
and it was God's grace that you know helped me even through the anger. You know, God will allow you to go through certain things. It's like how I tell my wife. You know, I wish God could see all of us like He saw Job, mm. and allow all of us to be tested beyond our boundaries. Yeah. But God knows yeah. everyone, and God yeah. knows it was only Job He could trust to allow the devil With to do that every exact test. Because yeah. none of us can <clears throat> handle that. And I think God allowed me to go through <coughs> these things because He knew what was ahead of us. Mm. And you know, it was it was planning. You know, I'm not saying now we don't argue. Well, you know, it's okay. Well, husband and wife. Yeah. Add, though, because when I, the first time, so after I just resigned, I, I then told him about the temptations. And the way he reacted was completely different from when I actually felt. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the first time was when, like he said, you know, he'll go, he'll go for days without, he won't talk to me, he'll react to the kids. How did that make you feel? Uh, I was, I, I, it made everything worse. Yeah. for me because around that time was also when we started having then there were a series of accidents as well but I, that was then after then I now left my job now yeah f fast forward a year after when I traveled then I fell mm. and then I felt God said to tell him but it wasn't time mm. and then maybe a year or and a half after then I told him but at this time he reacted differently when I told him all he did was he hugged me and he prayed for me the first time when I told him about the temptations, mm. he freaked out. When I told him I fell, he hugged me and he prayed for me. And so till today, I am baffled because one of the fears of me telling him was that when I faced temptations and I told him and he freaked out, how is he going uh, to I actually fell. act I when mean, I... I'm right down on the floor. What would he do? What is he now going to do? <laughs> you know, but he just hugged me and he prayed for me. And that's what he's talking about, grace. And trust me, it was, he didn't... He didn't, he didn't they went, it wasn't like you went with days not talking to me. It was like everything was normal. And that's where I know of the grace of God because God, he may not even understand it, but for me watching him, there was a grace upon him that I didn't, I didn't really understand. And I understand that grace now because even now coming out and sharing this story, people look at you like, women don't talk about this. How can you talk about this? How do you feel? But there's just something over me that I can't even feel anything. It's like that I'm numb. Because the, the second time um, after she fell, she didn't tell me face to face verbally. Mm -hmm. She wrote mm -hmm. a long email to me. Mm -hmm. And I read it. I think I read that email twice mm -hmm. within the time she sent it to mm -hmm. me. And I deleted it immediately. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I didn't hold on to it. Mm -hmm. I took what it was. I think it was a good move, deleting it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. something like, just told me, get, it, get, it off. get, get it, rid of it, you know, because obviously she had told me about the temptation, and that's when I was angry. And like I said, God is intentional. He was working through both of us. Did you ever lose loving her and you loving him? Funny enough, um, I've never. Hmm. And I'll say that because remember in the beginning I talked about law school and praying for a wife. When I was praying for a wife, I was specific about what I wanted, even her shape, the body, and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the only thing I didn't pray about was, you know, um, someone that is, um, how would I put it? I'm trying to put it in a nice way. I'm very, <laughs> no, but, but just put it yeah. the way it is. Omi um, is very liberal, she's very free. Yeah. You know, she can put her okay, shoes here no, he, and sit he up. Has I'm OCD. very particular. He has OCD. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing because... Well, they say opposite attract. So. <laughs> well, yeah, so that's the attraction. I suppose. Yeah, that's particular. OCD. <laughs> <laughs> I had my own special prayer point specifics, yeah. you know, while I was praying for a wife. Amazingly, all the boxes were dotted, were ticked beyond my expectation. So you saying this now is like, you know, it, it, it resonates with me. And, um, you know, the opposite that, you know, that attracts. You know, I because I, I love her so much, because I know she complains. That I'm the kind of person, I'm not very vocal to say I love you all the time. But sometimes she's sleeping and I'm looking yeah. at her, I'm like, wow. Yes. You know, I'm like, sometimes I pray over her. Well, you know, most, us, most of us guys, that's, that's how we're wired, you know. Yeah. Everything is going on in our heads. You know, it's just express bringing it. it out. And for you ladies, why don't you say it? I mean, it's going on there. Bring it out. Say it. You know, but um, 
Okay. Anyway, neither here nor there. <laughs> We're wrapping up. Whoa, my goodness, look at the time. Gosh, and I thought we were just starting. There's just so much to hear from these guys. And would you guys want to come back again? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You want to come back? Yes. It's definitely. a deal. It's a deal. Now, this is the listening part of the show. Um, I'll have them back live where you can call and ask them those questions you would want to ask. And we'll just have a back and forth conversation with them and you in the studio. We just had, I just had to bring them in, in for you to listen to their story. All kinds of crazy things happen in marriage with us individuals coming from where we're coming from, our backgrounds and all of that. And we bring all of that to um, whoever we've chosen as our, as our life partner and all kinds of crazy things happening. But we live through it. We pull through it. Um, and just like you've heard, it's just a fall. It's bad, but we can get up and we can move on. Yes. Congratulations on this lovely book. Where can we pick this book from? Uh, a different place. So if you're in Lagos, Latana um, Bookstore in Okwawos, Close VI, in Ikori, Nakinos Boulevard, Four Bank Road, Ikori, on the mainland, the Plectrum Hub, uh, um, in Uyo, where South South Andrea, Boulder's Bookstore, the Fusion Store in Abuja, we're also on Jumia, so mm -hmm. you can get it all over Nigeria from Jumia. We, we are Rene Q in Ghana. We are also on Amazon in the US, the UK, um, all the European countries, Canada. You can buy print copies on Amazon and all over the world you can buy the ebook version on Kindle. Now this is a gift you can give someone. I'm telling you, you can just buy it, wrap it up and just send it to that person going through crazy times right now especially, personally especially the younger generation yeah. as well I'm so they don't make some of the mistakes some of us have made and sometimes we make these mistakes to be the light to them yeah. well Thank let's you. also sorry to interject mm -hmm. let's also be real you make mistakes oh yes indeed. you're meant to make mistakes mm. and a lot of times those mistakes are what god uses to mold you mm. if you're a believer and you have a relationship with god like job he will allow you to go through pain but just stick close. It's not the end. This life we're living is transient. Because he said, I go in my father's house, a many mansion. I go to a place and prepare it for you. And that's what, if you're a believer and you have a relationship, hold on to that. You know, the devil wants to take you away because he knows he's gone. But he knows he cannot force you. But he will tempt you. At the same time, God doesn't force you to choose salvation. He shows you grace so that you can choose it and know that at the end of the day, it was your choice. Words coming from the man himself, Benga or Shikoya. I'm telling you, I, I, it's so sad the show is ending now. I mean, the biggest do it afraid moment in my life. I wish we could talk about that. But <laughs> look, they're going to come back again. Uh, the phone lines will be open and um, you'll be able to call and, you know, just ask them what you want to ask them. And um, we'll probably talk on the biggest do it afraid moments of my life. Thank you so much for coming once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to see Adaba. The men's room is over and out. Wait, 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 wait. Twitter, don't forget, at men's room OJ, and then Facebook, um, men's room OJ. And then my personal uh, my personal Facebook account, Onimisi Adaba. Uh, just throw your thoughts, share your thoughts, and uh, we'll take it from there. Good night, and God bless you real good. Please click on the red subscribe button below this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.